Have you ever felt stuck in a cycle of clutter, not sure where to begin your journey to a simpler, more organized life? Trust me, you are not alone. Sometimes we unknowingly become the creators of our own clutter chaos. That's where the clutter timeline comes into play. I'm gonna walk you through the five steps I've come up with so that you can identify where you are and what process may help you next. If you're new here, I'm Becky Truda, and through my own experiences, I've put together five foolproof steps to help you declutter your home and put yourself on the decluttering timeline. Step one can be one of the most painful, and that is acceptance, identifying that you have a problem. Now, my husband will tell you I've always loved a good declutter, so I knew and loved decluttering for many years. But it wasn't until Jordan finally told me in his frustration that he hates when I declutter. Not because I'm getting rid of things, but because I'm just gonna go out and buy the same things all over again. He said, so either get rid of it and stop buying more of the same or similar thing, or just stop decluttering. So you can imagine that hurt, and it took me several days of reflection and sulking to come to the realization that he was right, and I was doing this decluttering thing all wrong. I had finally hit the moment of acceptance. And if you're here watching this video, you most likely are starting to or have reached this part of the timeline and we're ready for step two. Step two on the timeline means you're ready and willing to schedule huge declutters. And by that, I mean one hour or more. This phase can be extremely frustrating or overwhelming at first, but I promise you that if you stick with it, you'll come out with a minimalist mindset change. Now that you accept that you have a problem, it's time to flip it around and reverse it. First, I binged tons of decluttering videos and I looked at their spaces to see what they felt like. I knew I couldn't deal with the amount of inventory I had and have peace. So I began sporadic and huge declutters. Now I would recommend putting this decluttering time on your calendar and setting aside times in your day that you know that you can dedicate. I didn't do this and I think it's one of the reasons that it took me a lot longer. When I would do my closet, I would take all my clothes out and try things on and go one by one. And if you're like me, it was really hard to know my style at that time because I just had too much. I didn't even really know what I liked to wear and what I could get rid of. So it took time. If you'd like any more tips on decluttering clothes, put a smile emoji in the chat and I'll make a video just about how I decluttered 80 to 90% of my clothes and the rules that I followed. But doing this with the inventory of clothes I had took time. If I had just stopped after 10 to 20 minutes, I would still have piles and piles of clothes out and I would never have wanted to do it again. So set aside at least an hour and get some real decluttering done. I like to do my decluttering with music and a glass of wine. It doesn't need to be as painful as it sounds and it can be a huge stress relief if you frame it that way. Step three is about trial and error. Now that you've gotten out all the easy stuff you know you didn't like, it's time for a trial and error experiment. I have done several videos about different decluttering techniques to try. The latest one was doing a box party and I'll link that below if you're interested. When I first reached this process, I used a box or trash bag and would store clothes, home decor, shoes, dishes, anything I felt like I probably was ready to get rid of, but it gave me pause and made me anxious at that time. Doing this will push you to better understand your needs without having regrets or having to buy things over again. Personally, I wouldn't go through the boxes or bags unless you're looking for something very specific. Everything else for me would be donated within one to three months. I have never regretted getting rid of any of it. Once you grow more comfortable with this process, you can use it with your sentimental items as well. It taught me that if everything is sentimental, it's the same thing as saying nothing is. We store and put away all our things we say are most precious to us. So maybe one day our kids will want it. Not realizing storing it away often causes it to become ruined in our attics. And if it was really special, we should be allowing ourselves to look at it and enjoy it every day. Step four is where my life really changed. It means that you're ready to experiment with your money. Trying a no spend month or only shopping from a list. Now this is something you can do while you're working on step two and three. I started with no spend weeks when I first started out because doing a whole month at that time felt too daunting. If you want to check out my no spend week worksheets, it's on my website, I've linked below. And if you join the email group, I will send it to you for free. These experiments with not buying anything are great ways to reflect on your thinking and practice gratitude and a little ingenuity. 
When I needed or really wanted something, I had to look around my house at what I had and see if I could make do. For example, when my desk chair broke, I didn't have a new one. I started using one of our dining room chairs and now my brother has given me his old chair. But my daughter doesn't have one for her desk, so we share. I'm not talking about making your life harder, I'm just saying less inventory means more space, peace, and money in your pocket. Experiment with not buying anything new or only shopping from a list and you'll find that many things you have around your home can have multiple purposes. And finally, we've reached the end, guys. We're here. We're at the maintenance phase. Step five, finally maintain. Now I thought that once I finally decluttered, I would never have to declutter again. But sadly, that just isn't true. Even if I lived by myself, eventually things would get worn out or brought in that I didn't want anymore or needed. So you're going to have to maintain. And what I mean by that is put a box or a bag by your door or somewhere that you find convenient. And as you're going through your day and you see things you're not using anymore, pick them up and put them in that box. For example, I recently bought a hair product and I just realized it wasn't for me. This happens to us even with the best intentions. We find things that we think are gonna be amazing and then they just aren't. Instead of hanging on to that and hoping that one day I'm going to change my mind and like it, I've just decided to declutter it and let it go. Because I'm in the maintenance phase, it means that I don't have to do large declutters very often. Really now, I only do them maybe once or twice a year where I go through my entire house. If you can hit the maintenance phase, it means that you can maintain your peaceful home without having to put in hours and hours of decluttering any longer. It's a great place to be. Thank you guys so much for listening and remember to hit that subscribe button and my next video will come out next week. I'll see you later, friends.